Our next speaker is from Los Angeles, California. I've known Steve um, off and on for 20, 25 years. The, the first time we, we interfaced, I was working for Normal, and Steve was starting up a hemp company, which was uh, very successful and had some really good products. And he's now migrated out to the West Coast, where he's done some very good work. And, and we, we asked him to come and speak to you because of his uh, some of the analysis that he's done on the cannabis that he's supplying his patients in his dispensary, which is called the Harborside Dispensary in Los Angeles. I think this is very, very interesting information that Steve has gathered. He's not, simp he's not done yet. This is, this is an ongoing thing. Um, but it's good to know. It's, it's something that we should all think about and apply, if you will, Steve D'Angelo. Thanks for that reception, everybody. I'd like to thank Mary Lynn and Al for the great honor of addressing this eminent gathering. I usually like to think of myself as a fairly smooth public speaker, but I have to confess that in preparation for this event, I had a little bit of nervousness and found myself poring over my presentation, checking my graphs, checking my figures and terminology, hoping that I didn't make an embarrassing mistake in front of a bunch of scientists and researchers. Uh, I woke up this morning to take a look at my timeline and find that I'd made some very silly and simple mistakes right there on what was the first slide of my presentation. So uh, when you see the timeline come up in a momento, um, you can adjust your presentations accordingly. I'd also like to disclose that I am a salaried employee and sit on the board of Harborside Health Center. I am also helped raise startup capital for Steep Hill Laboratory. I'm executive director of Harborside Health Center, a nonprofit community service city licensed medical cannabis dispensary in Oakland, California. I launched Harborside three and a half years ago with the intention of providing a new model of professionalism and legitimacy for an industry which had little of either and desperately needed both. Even before we opened our doors, I recognized the need for lab testing of our cannabis. How could we call it medicine if we didn't know what was in it, if we didn't know it was safe? Unfortunately, after calling every certified analytical laboratory in the Bay Area, I was unable to find a single one that would test our cannabis. But I never lost the vision of providing our patients with lab-tested medicine and began to research the possibility of setting up our own laboratory. Shortly after realizing what a daunting prospect that was, I ran into Dave Lampak and Addison DeMora at the 2007 Normal Conference and discovered that they were passionately committed to the same vision. None of us were scientists. None of us had professional lab experience. But we had plenty of passion and enthusiasm and no other viable alternative. And so we embarked on a long process to research, develop, and verify an analytical method. We were very kindly assisted in this process by a leading Bay Area chemist, widely known for his work with psychoactive substances who must remain private due to legal jeopardy and professional jeopardy. In recognition of the many challenges we met and overcome, the new facility was named the Steep Hill Laboratory. In, 2000, in December of 2008, confident Steep Hill had attained an acceptable level of accuracy. Harborside began testing all of its medicine and providing results to our patients so they could make more well-informed selections of medicine. The testing program had two main components. Safety screening for the presence of pathogenic molds, which was accomplished with plate culture analysis, and cannabinoid quantification which utilized a GCMS process. Due to cost factors, we limited cannabinoid quantification to THC, CBD, and CBN. I'm now pleased and, and proud to share with you some of the results of our testing program, which as far as we know, is the first large-scale analysis of California's medical cannabis supply. One of the first things we learned was that the strain of cannabis is not an effective predictor of its cannabinoid profile. Put differently, we found that cannabinoid content varied widely within the same strain of cannabis. 
different batches of our most popular strain, Granddaddy Purple, had THC levels as high as 20.79% or as low as 5.85%. CBD variation was less, ranging from 0.96% to 0%. We suspect that these variations are the result of differences in growing conditions, the skill of the grower, and the phenotype of the plants. We found less variation in CBN content, which we utilize mainly as an indicator of time elapsed since harvest. As you can see in the chart, THC content of our medicines ranges from less than 6% to over 21%. Please note that the chart does include concentrates as well as cannabis flowers, which accounts for the large number of samples with THC content greater than 21%. So one of our earliest discoveries was that there are wide variations in the THC content of our medicine, even within the same strains. Now, please bear with me. I'm going to take a quick tour from cannabinoid analysis, which we'll return to shortly. And I'm going to move on now uh, to tell you that when David, Addison, and I started the lab, safety screening was more important to us than cannabinoids. We had recently learned of reports that patients with severely compromised immune systems had died from ingesting cannabis infected with a type of mold called aspergillus. And we felt our first priority had to be preventing any more deaths. Because many of our patients do have compromised immune systems, Harborside has set mold acceptance standards which are considerably more stringent than those of the American Herbal Products Association. In order to ensure our patients receive only safe medicine, any cannabis which does not meet our strict safety standards is immediately pulled from inventory and returned to the grower. The safety screening program revealed that some type of mold was present in 23% of our cannabis. However, most of that mold was harmless with only 2% in excess of our safety standards. A total of 6% of our cannabis tested positive for aspergillus, but only 1% was in excess of our safety standards. So the safety screening program told us that while the vast majority of our medicine was safe, a small percentage was infected with alarming quantities of pathogenic molds, which, thanks to our testing program, never reached our patients. Did we save any lives or prevent serious illness? We'll never know but better safe than sorry, and we certainly have been sleeping better at night. Okay, back to cannabinoids. And uh, this is where Patients Out of Time enters the story, because it was at the 2008 conference, when Steep Hill was still immersed in early days of research and development, that I first learned of studies strongly suggesting that there was potent medical efficacy for CBD. Until then, most of my attention had been focused on THC. Over the course of the next year, I continued to learn about the promise of CBD and grew ever more hopeful about the promise of helping our most gravely ill patients. So you can imagine the dismay I felt when our first test results started to come in, showing negligible CBD content in the vast majority of our medicine. Only 17% of our medicine had CBD content greater than 1%. Our hypothesis is that CBD has been almost entirely bred out of California's cannabis supply by generations of underground breeders who selected for high THC content. We did manage to identify a small number of CBD-rich strains, however. Our top 10 CBD-rich strains contained between 15.69% and 16 and 6.27 CBD. As with THC, we found considerable variation in CBD content within the same strain of cannabis, but the variation was less pronounced. An aggregate look at our CBD results also demonstrates the relative lack of CBD in Harborside's cannabis supply. Of 2,986 samples tested for CBD, only 501 contained more than 1% and only nine samples contained more than 11% CBD. The pattern holds true across the board. The greater the CBD content, the less likely we would find it in our medicine. 
This was terrible news. Just as evidence of CBD's medical efficacy was mounting, we discovered its almost complete absence from our supply of medicine. What were we going to say to our patients who would be learning about CBD and asking us for CBD-rich medicines? How would we ever begin to help with researching the medical potential of CBD if there was none of it present in our medicine? And then this concern was heightened as we began to receive anecdotal reports from patients who had tried our, our CBD-rich medicines and had reported good results. Most of these patients fell into one of two categories, either cannabis-naive patients who had no prior experience with the plant before their doctor recommended it, or older patients who found that THC-rich strains now tended to produce dysphoria more often than euphoria. In both cases, patients reported that CBD-rich medicine provided symptomatic relief while reducing unwanted psychoactivity both in intensity and in range of effect. <clears throat> As these results came in, I shared them with my good friends, Fred Gardner and Martin Lee. You'll probably recognize Fred as publisher of O'Shaughnessy's journal, and Martin as the author of a monumental book entitled Acid Dreams. <clears throat> Fred and Martin related to me some of the history that I was unaware of, that CBD-rich cannabis had long been a dream of Todd McCurea and early researchers, but there had been no real technical way of providing that to patients uh, until the advent of our laboratory. As Fred and I and Martin looked over the CBD results, all three of us realized something must be done. We had to take action to ensure that CBD-rich medicine would be available to patients and researchers. And so began Project CBD. <clears throat> Martin is now in the project of formally organizing Project CBD as a nonprofit corporation. We had five basic objectives to identify CBD rich strains, to obtain seeds and clones of those strains so that we could provide them to our most, most trusted growers, who in turn would bring medicine back to us to distribute to our patients and hopefully clones to increase our patient access to medicine, and finally, hopefully, uh, we hoped to be able to study some of the effects of this CBD-rich medicine that we would be distributing. So I'm pleased to report now that we've made real progress towards those goals. We've sifted through thousands of samples to find CBD-rich strains of cannabis. We've tracked down often elusive growers and wheedled and cajoled them to provide us with the genetic material needed to propagate those strains. We provided that genetic material to our most trusted growers who have been begun to provide us with a steady stream of CBD-rich cannabis. These days, almost every day, we have at least one strain of CBD-rich medicine available for patients. And within 60 days or so, we expect to be able to start making clones, CBD-rich clones, available to our patients so they can grow their own CBD-rich medicine, so that that CBD-rich genetic material can spread to other growers and hopefully to other dispensaries. And in February of this year, we began the research phase by distributing a form developed by Project CBD to systematically collect patients' anecdotal reports of their experiences with CBD-rich medicine. <clears throat> It's our hope that this data might encourage and perhaps guide further clinical research into the medical efficacy of CBD. You know, I think the whole story of Steep Hill Lab, Harborside's testing program, and Project CBD is a shining example of the best qualities of the medical cannabis movement, an unwavering commitment to the health and welfare of our patients a fierce tenacity and persistence in the face of legal and technical obstacles, a willingness to sacrifice financial gain for the greater good, and an undying determination to bring the truths we know out of the shadows and into the light. I think it's something that we can all be proud of. Thank you. <clears throat>